Hi everyone. So today I just did some pruning. Um, what has been happening is that they, we had a lot of rain recently and I think it's because of the wet weather. Um, the custard apple it's prone to a lot this fungus disease so it's not much here that you can see but um, down below you see all the leaves down there and um, some of the fruits are like just black well I chuck a few of them here so <laughs> um, it's under the pile of the pruned branches that I have so I thought uh, it's close to the end of the, you know, the, most of the custard apple fruit are maturing and I like to prune it and just to keep it maintained for the year. Come springtime and you have new roots, well not roots, new leaves. Um, so this is the reason why I have some free days off so I'm here pruning the trees. I'm going to show you some examples soon. So this was the first custard apple uh, tree that I pruned today. It was a whole day's work. work. Um, not just one custard apple tree, but the whole orchard pretty much. Um, so this is the, I think this variety is the Praxton. Um, and the fruit is slightly different. I don't favor this tree personally, um, but it's still a beautiful tree. So we keep it all this time. Um, it doesn't have many fruits this one is not disease it's just uh, damage from the branches rubbing against the skin this is pretty much ready to eat so is this one and so are these one down here so I pruned it down pretty aggressively um, but I, I'm sure it's going to be all right because before I couldn't see, you know, anything down below. So I like it nice and clean and just making sure that, you know, trying to get rid of all the uh, branches that are left over. I'll clean that up at some stage. Um, so this one, yeah, just slightly a different color and shape. Um, not the best of taste. So over here, also from the same family. Um, so the fruits here, I pruned this moderately. And um, also the Praxton family. So this one is like pretty much ready to eat. And there's one right there. That one's also ready to eat. Really, it's big. Like, it's pretty big. And the rest, well... I'm not sure, you know, like these things, I might leave it on the tree to mature, but um, like I said, this come close to like mid winter and uh, it doesn't really do well out here in the elements. Okay, so this tree here is the same tree as the one as the one that uh, my parent grew in their house um, in the metro area so this is a seedling and I pruned this back heavily as well it's just left some branches here um, for the first time it's fruit <laughs> it's not the best example but it's okay I mean it's doing well um, so that's one of it and it, this is another seedling it's not doing so well as the other one and it hasn't fruit yet and over here I have the Praxton also so I believe like these Purple custard apple tree, they are a slight purple or like brownish purple, and then when it mature, it turns sort of like these color, which is normal. But if you have fruits that are usually green and it has like that sort of like dark color, not this variety, 
um, that means that it's uh, rotting away. I got one over there, I'll show you. So these are like fungus disease. Um, I notice a lot more in the shade house than out here. Out here not so much, but I do get some. And ideally you should remove it because it will spread. Okay. Just walking over here, this is another one. Um, also the pra Praxton. Pacton. Paxton. Okay. I think that's how you pronounce it. But like you can see it in the sun, they got that light purple color. It's perfectly normal for this variety. So these are bought at the same time. Some of these are ready to eat, honestly. I did a lot of pruning today, so I cut out the rosemary have to clear it out just in case of snakes <laughs> look how much custard apple I have and I just leave it to the guardian of the land I'm gonna give this a bit of a clean as well <laughs> I think I um, accidentally prune around about 30 of these small fruits <laughs> let's go to the shade house okay so this is uh, the one in the shade house, the first shade house. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't know what variety this is anymore. Maybe it's a... Um, I don't know. I, I, from memory, I remember something, or maybe Praxin or African Pry. But this is the first time it has fruit since... I don't know, five years, six years. Uh, I have not pruned this tree, therefore there's heaps of foliage still on it, but it doesn't have that much disease. You can see the leaves, it's still beautiful and green. Um, like, there are some browning here, fungus disease here, but it's not too bad. Like over the other side, it's massive that was the reason why i prune it um just to try and manage right this is just the other side um i'm still in the same shade house i prune this in between so it's not um oh look they're all ready to eat Ooh. <laughs> They are amazing. Look at that. All maturing. And it's all on one side too. The other side, not so many. But this tree, not so much disease either. Still beautiful green foliage. So all the fruit fruiting is on that side. Nothing over this side, the right side. And then you can see I did do some pruning. But this was like a couple of weeks ago. Look at these beautiful custard apples there. That's probably like about 40 grams or something. I mean 400 grams. Not so much fruit here. Like one tree is like about three or four. Um... Ooh, these are ready to eat. And those one over there are ready to eat as well. So you can look at the tree. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, this is what you want, hey? The leaves, big, green, no fungus infection. And then on this side, you can see there's a bit here. All right. Um, this tree probably have about five, six fruit. And then there's this one over here. Like, these on the ground. Um, 
it has a lot of foliage and the fruits some of them are ready this one have a bit more but um still got a way to go before it's mature And there's some in there. Oh, I'll go over this side. So, there we go. Those other ones over there got plenty of time to, pr um, to mature. Some of these are ready to pick. Um, we were just waiting for the rain to stop before we start pick, harvesting some. Um, because I think a lot of rain and cooler climate is um, creating disease as well. That's what I think I briefly read. And this tree has some form of fungus infection. But it's not as bad. Like, I personally don't encourage a lot of fruit. This is naturally um, pollinating. Right. So I'm just going to go to the other side before the water starts to get us wet. Myself, mainly. So we dug most of the yams out. <laughs> And a lot of them were very small. Like smaller than the size of my fist. So, um, you just eat some, free some, and regrow some. I'm going to have a break with yam. <laughs> okay, so I am in the other shade house. I think most of the problems are from this area because it's mostly custard apple. Um, so there were a lot of foliage earlier this morning and I just basically trim it away massively. <laughs> so these ones are like pretty much ready to eat. So is that one down there. Oh, I've got some corn. <laughs> And this one's ready to eat as well. It's quite lovely. I mean, before you wouldn't be able to see the fruit. Um, so a lot of the foliage that I prunes were like leaves like these. And so this one here. Some big custard apple there. You can see a lot clearer now. Ooh. These are some of these are ready to eat, I think. Pretty much. So you can see it much better under. I think I got rid of about maybe 30% from each tree. There were some of them that I pruned quite heavily because it was just looking so miserable that I had to do it. Um, look at these ones. Mesmerizing. Like, um, these ones might not reach full maturity, depending on the weather. But these ones are pretty much sure to mature. And sometimes I think you just have to cut your losses and, um, you know, try to save the tree rather than trying to maintain the fruit. So these one over here, look at that, got these insects on it. It was okay. Like you can still eat it. So I cut quite a bit there as well. 
So these trees are fine down here, but as I get down further, you start to see the leaves a bit yellow and then it's like burn at the edges. So that's a sign of fungus infection. I'll put down the name, scientific name. I mean, you can certainly buy some sort of um, antifungal spray and spray it for sure. It will help manage the situation. Um, I just want to see to the end of this fruiting season and then I'll take care of these tree a lot better. Um, I mean, they are really nice. <laughs> There's a one big one up there. So I personally, I wouldn't recommend you prune when it's raining because um, if the the new cut that you prune off get wet and then it infiltrate and then it grow become moldy or something like that and doesn't try dry pro properly then it will introduce infection into the the tree as well that's just my guess okay nothing scientific about that um oh here we go i've got an example here so you see i need to get rid of this so it went moldy like so and it's hard rock i mean I just need to put it somewhere where I remember to remove it when I <laughs> go out. So my advice would be make sure, make sure that you pick a day when it's not rainy <laughs> to prune. Or potentially you're going to have like a few days of sun before you prune. So that tree was standing up before but it leans to one side and we didn't have time to stake it so now this is what happened we'll just wait until all the fruits are done ripening here we go this is another disease like if you don't get rid of this sorry if you don't get rid of this, it will spread to the other fruits. You can see that there's lots of fruit there. Over that side. I know, it's looking very sad, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Just from this angle here. I mean, I've already done like the first scan this morning when I went and pruned. I mean, I still miss out on some of it. Um, this is my third walk for the day. <laughs> well, I mean, inspecting it, but I've been pruning. Um, it's best advice to clean your tool and get a really sharp tool. Uh, I was using the secretary. But you do get blisters, so you wear gloves and make sure you change hand, even though you're dominant right hand or left hand. Make sure to change it over so that you don't give yourself blisters. Um, you can see in there, see this tree? I mean, if I were to leave all the the foliage back on you can see like these one there are heaps of the yellow leaves and burning at the edge um, it could just be nutrient deficient as well I mean I mean definitely um, nutrient deficient coupled with fungus infection will just make the tree looks miserable like that one over there and this one over here I was contemplating, you know, to cut off all the fruit. <laughs> like I said, cut my losses. But um, these are not mine. Uh, I need to go through my parent first before I do anything. Um, I did say to them that I was going to prune today. But I don't know how much pruning I have done. <laughs> I'll explain later. <laughs> 
So, yeah. So, I picked up a lot of those black fruit, uh, custard apple, and um, the most I have seen in the years that I have grown these. Oh, there's another one. I think this one is a good example. Here we go. So this one's already like starting to have infection and then, you know, there's no point in keeping it on. Like you want the tree just to put uh, effort into maintaining the rest of the the fruit and the foliage. Yeah. So I reached the end here and there's quite a few fruits that are ready to pick. Um This one over here, I was thinking snip, 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 prune all of them off. So, see all these infections here? <laughs> yeah, it's not the prettiest. I mean, I've had it happen to the one up in my parents' place before. You can still eat it. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go black inside should be fine so like you can see all of this is a lot clearer all the pruning i've done today um so this one is ready to eat so we'll be picking a few for offering soon and when i say that it's offering to the spirit because <laughs> we're buddhists that's what we do and then we might give some away um our friends so look at this one this is really pretty that's like ready to eat and this is look at the tree it's very bare it was not like this before like it, I pruned it a lot that's why you can see a lot of the fruit now So these one over here too. So that one's ready to eat. The black from that is from wind and damage from the branch. So um, that's not disease. So this tree here, there's only a few. There was a lot of these branches. Like the leaves are burning like this. It doesn't look good <laughs> like you want your tree to look something like that beautiful foliage big healthy fruit oh, up there I think this is a beautiful tree it's like so healthy and the fruits If I come in from this side, there we go. Mesmerizing. Look at that. So as I grow to the top of the shade house, we will trim it down to keep it low. And once these trees have larger trunk, we're gonna open this right up. Hopefully. So uh, you can see this tree here, I pruned it a lot as well. Um, it was just looking miserable. And I cut quite a few, at least like five baby fruit from this branch because it's broken there. And I don't think it's going to, you know, have enough energy to mature the fruits. So I thought I'll just do it a favor by removing it.
so the fruiting will come and go. It'll come every year, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's okay to get rid of it. And then you can have it for next year. Just maintain the, the tree. Otherwise, if the tree dies, then you won't have any fruit. There's this tree here. Ooh. Look at this. Oh my goodness. These one over here. Never been in love with custard apple in my life. It's so good. <laughs> and they're not even mine. <laughs> so I like these one. Definitely it's gonna be restaked once. Um I'll just be in discussion with my parents just to cut all the fruits off and just stake it and maintain that tree. Like I said, it doesn't look so healthy. Yeah. So the disease will spread if you don't clear it up. Um, once you prune it, get rid of it. That one's ready to eat. That one's ready to eat there. Some of these smaller ones. Here we go. At least five or six of these are ready to eat. See this tree doesn't do so well. So look at this. I mean this one is not too bad. You can see all the fruits there down on the ground. I might cut some of the one on the ground off. Restake it. Pull it up. All right. So I'm back to the beginning. These trees are not too bad. There you have it. Okay, that's the end of my uh, update for today with custard apple. Um, so really, uh, my personal take on this is um, because we haven't put enough energy in maintaining this place. Our whole family is pretty much busy with work. And like I said, I only go up here like whenever available. So on my days off, that's like maybe twice a week or once a week so between our families and um, I do give a liquid seaweed fertilizer um, the other thing is I do have like a compost tea machine I just haven't been able to get it up here <laughs> and I guess like once I do a bit of compost tea and feed this really well the tree will be restored back to health again so um, which just mean that I need to be a little bit more committed to this place. Um, at the moment, I'm not. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll quit my job one day and just be a full-time farmer. Uh, that's a big commitment. But I'm pretty sure it will be a great life too, being a farmer. But uh, make sure you pay off all your debts before you do that. <laughs> or most of it. Otherwise, if you fail... I'm like, walk past here. Look at this. Like, if you fail as a farmer, like, you don't want to give up everything that you've started. Okay. Um, I hope you are all well. I'll catch you next time. Bye.